Hey family, it's Travis and Jackie. Hey guys. We are the pastors of Fort City Church. I believe this message you're about to watch is gonna be a game changer yes. for you. Get your notepads out, get your appetite stirred. <laughs> God has something to say to you in the right place at the right time. Listen, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications for when we go live, all the good stuff. We yeah. wanna make sure that you also share this message with a friend. Everybody. If it touches your life, make sure you share it with everybody you know. No doubt, we love you, we'll see you soon. People of God, come on, man. What? My God, man, I'm telling you, it is going to be difficult. I don't want to declare this, but it ain't going to be the easiest to preach the way I want to. I'm going to have to preach the way he wants it to be preached because the power of God is up in her, up in her. And I know you feel it. I know you feel it wherever you're watching from, man. God is here and he's doing something miraculous um, in the earth through Columbia, South Carolina. And I'm just honored, my wife and I, to be a part of it. Thank you guys for believing in this vision, um, for giving to this vision, for praying for this vision, for standing by this vision, for supporting this vision, for serving uh, this vision. Uh, because through it, God, through it, God is engaging hearts around the world. The unchurched, the overchurched, allowing them to move forward with him. And so I'm excited, man. I don't want to prolong the time. I do have a word from God that I cannot wait to release. But before I do, I just want to shout out the, uh, I, you know, I know I am, um, uh, no, I'm biased. <laughs> but in my opinion, the most perfect lady on the planet. Beyonce, I'm kidding. My wife, Dr. Jackie. She's a bad girl. I love her so much, man. I'm excited, man. Um, I'm excited for this word today. I'm gonna do a little, something a little different. Before I read the scripture, I'm gonna tell you what I believe the Lord laid on my heart to talk about. We are um, jumping off our campaign, um, Love Like Crazy, and I feel like the Lord told me to release this word. Four words. Be what you need. Be what you need. I'm going to read from your favorite book of the Bible, Amos. <laughs> chapter 9, Amos chapter 9. Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Um, Amos chapter 9, verse 13. You ready? Behold, the days are coming declares the prophet, declares the preacher. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. Whenever God is speaking, you might want to pay attention. He says, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed, the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. It says, when this happens, I will restore. And I could get stuck right there. Ooh, somebody just type it. Restoration is coming. My God. He says, I will restore. God personally gets involved. He says, I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. 
So I felt like the Lord was saying something here, Miss Luana, so I had to dig in just a little bit. And the plowman is the one who plowed the ground for the seeds to come. And the reaper was the one who gathered the harvest. So this verse literally means this. You ready for this? He says the harvest will be so massive that's coming. That before you can even gather what I've caused to happen, it'll be time to sow again. So just to make sure we're on the same page and to let you know I'm not making it up, I got to read it from the message translation. It says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. I could stop right there, Jonathan, but... Because I got some of the dream team in the room, so I already know how y'all act. He says, it won't be long now. The enemy has been trying to convince you that it's further away than it is. If you knew how close it was, Kenny, there's no way you could be depressed. If you knew that it could actually happen tomorrow, you already throw yourself a party. If you knew. He says it won't be long now. This is God's decree. Watch this. Y'all be careful with this. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. Denar, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look. Oh my God. Everywhere you look, you won't even be able to check your email. You'll be like, where did this come? Everywhere you look, you thought you were going through that for nothing. Everywhere you look, this is the Bible. I'm just reading it. I'm just reading it. He says, everywhere you look, blessings. Woo! Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I got a word from God tonight, but I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Don't scare nobody, but I'm going to give you 20 seconds to praise God like you know that is closer than you think. Give him the praise like you know it. It's closer, it's closer, it's closer, it's closer than you think. God, we thank you for this day that you've made. We won't wait. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you that our weeping may have endured for a night. But joy is here. Peace is here. Favor is here. It's already, already done in Jesus' name. Everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. I heard, Cass, as I heard as we were worshiping, it just kept getting more intense in my spirit, Gray. I just kept hearing this word. And it was so loud, I almost wanted to grab my wife and whisper it to her. But it was almost like the Lord kept speaking to me and saying, Travis, 
it's a new day. And I don't know who needs to hear that, but it's a new day. Gloria, it's a new day. Janiah, it's a new day. Reggie, it's a new day. Christian, it's a new day. Roland, it's a new day. Daddy Willie, it's a new day. Marlon, it's a new day. Amy, it's a new day. Tamika, it's a new day. Santana, Roberta, it's a new day. <laughs> it's a new day, man. It's a new day. It's a new day. And this, can I tell you something? The enemy works the most, hear me, when he's nervous the most. You didn't hear what I just said. I'm going to talk to this side. When the enemy starts getting busier in your life, that means something is making him nervous. And he don't quite know what it is, but he's like, something is ha- something is shifting. He's nervous, but he can't stop what God is up to. It's a new day. Well, how do I experience the fullness of what God has for me? How do I walk in his promises? How do I see what he was up to manifest? Be what you need. Hear me, hear me. Don't wait for it. Become it. All right, take your seats. Let's jump in, man. I got a word from God. I'm having to restrain myself. All I want to do is worship, man. But I feel like the Lord wants to impart some information into you, and then we're going to go a little further. So... So, I was thinking, I was thinking just about all the people I've met in my life, and I've met thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, upon thousands, upon thousands. But I've never met anybody in my life, this is a true statement, that's more creative than a genius I know named Denar Young. I don't know anyone, I literally don't know anybody on the planet more creative than this guy. He can make something out of nothing. And he's a master researcher, so so anything like food, he got you. Art, he got you. Music, he got you. Fashion, he got you. Uh, All things culture, like he just gets it. The only problem (laughs) with this, he knew it was a setup. That Denar is so creative that you never really know what he's up to until he's done. (laughs) That I could preach, but we're going to wait on it. The amount of trust it takes to have faith that someone's experiment is not going to kill you. For example, Recently, he had this idea, Jason, and it was literally on on a one day's notice, this genius idea. He said, listen, 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 PT, this is what we need to do. You know, I got this idea for for some videos and some some photos and just some promotional stuff. We know you got new music rolling out. I said, we know you got new music rolling out. I said, we know you got new music. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. Shameless plug. Um... (laughs) So he said, what we need to do is we need to go to the mountains. Now, I didn't really know what that meant. <laughs> and I tried with everything in me to resist. I was like, well, I mean, don't, uh, Hopkins don't have any mountains? He said, no, man. He said, no, man, we need mountains. So he convinced me to go to the mountains. Now, we get in the car, four of us, and just a long story short, we go four hours into the middle of nowhere. I said, hey, I've been to Asheville before. He was like, no, 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 it's it's past Asheville. We just go, I mean, we just driving, y'all, for hours and hours and hours. Then we get to the foot of this mountain, 
And we drive for mountains. We don't know where we're going. There's no rails. There's just curves. We don't know where we're going. Um, and it didn't dawn on us. It didn't dawn on us until we got all the way up the mountain. We have invested hours into this trip. We get up the mountain and we look around, Sam, and we discover a revelation that we don't have any weapons. We are <laughs> in the wilderness. There are coyotes. There are lions, tigers, bears. Oh, my. There are <laughs> wildebeest and, and barefoot and mutants. Everything is out here. And, and, and at any moment, we could be attacked, and we don't have anything but cameras and a guitar. And, and that's the when when fear started kind of creeping up a little bit. We have a diverse church, but there is a major difference between white and black people. Um, and I believe that differences shouldn't just be tolerated, they should be celebrated. One of those differences is that if a white man dies in the woods, it is honorable. <laughs> like it's a badge of honor. Like at his funeral, they're like, Bubba always loved outdoors. <laughs> he... He left the earth in his favorite location. And if a black man dies in the mountains, there's no honor. I mean, literally, you laying up there in the coffin and people ain't even sad. They mad at you. They're like, what convinced him to take his in the mountain? I mean, they're walking by looking just dumb. Look at you just, just dumb. Like, he ain't never liked no woods before. Why would they even trust the natural elements and, and animals? And truth is, I'm not a big nature person, never been. I, I praise God for the technological, uh, <laughs> technological <laughs> advancements, I do big words, of this generation. And, and I, I'm grateful that, that I don't have to go outside to kill my food and stuff. And, and, but, but because I was so afraid, I paid attention to every single thing while we were walking up this mountain. Yes, we got out the car and we walked up this mountain. Um, and, and so I'm walking and I'm, I'm like, what's that sound? And I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous. And all, listen, all we got are cameras and a guitar. What are we going to do? Nothing. We are dinner for something, and I feel it. I feel the lurking. I feel eyes watching me from the woods. And so I'm afraid, and I noticed something. I noticed something real unique. There were thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of trees everywhere. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention I'm allergic to outside, too, <laughs> like all things outside. <laughs> So I'm popping extra Claritin. I'm like ODing on Claritin at this point. So I'm outside and, and I'm in a thousand of trees and I noticed something. There was no fruit. Like there were literally thousands of trees and no fruit. Y'all thought about that? There was no fruit out there at all. And, and the reason why there were no fruit inside in sight is because no seeds for fruit have been planted. The most powerful force on planet Earth is a seed. Genera uh, Genesis, not generations, Genesis <laughs> chapter 8, verse 22. It says, while the earth remains, seed time harvest, cold and heat, winter, summer, day and night, shall not cease. So this is what God says to Noah. He says, as long as the earth is here, the principle of the seed will remain. No seed, no fruit. For several months, I've been having this, this idea kind of stirring in my spirit. And this idea is simply this, that I hold the seed for my need. And the way that God revealed it to me, y'all, was not in like a worship service. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't in a, a very spiritual, uh, you know, I, it wasn't like this epiphany. It wasn't, he didn't crack the sky open. It happened by me complaining. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I, I'll get to say, I get more revelations by my complaints than I do by my praise. Y'all can look at me in that tone of voice, but I'm just going to keep it 100 for a second. Your prayer time is way more spiritual than mine. It's huge. 
You know, ah, bah, bah. Me, I... <laughs> I'm serious. I think it's admirable that you and God speak to each other in King James vernacular. Like, that's just not my thing. Like, when I talk to God, most of the time, it's really, really raw conversations. Like, I lay it out there for him. <laughs> I really do. And I, 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 tell him, I tell him the truth. And I just found it to be more fruitful for me to be direct and honest. So, so here's what happened. Here's what happened to me. I used to try this. When, when I speak stuff out loud, I'm able to hear what's really on my heart. And it makes me actually face the music. Like sometimes thoughts don't sound as bad in my head until I say it out loud. And and it's like, it's like if you ever say out loud what you feel, you hear how crazy your feelings are. And so I'll just be honest. I keep it behind it. And most of the time, I do this because by this time, by the time I'm venting, that means I've been carrying it for a second. So most of the time, like, there's a doorman on my way to speak to God called Dr. Jackie. So most of the time, <laughs> I, I say it to her, and then, and I'm, but I'm honest. She's like, how do you really feel? And I'm just like, well, I mean, I mean, I really want them to suffer. <laughs> like, I would love... For this person to, I mean, I don't want them to like get hurt, but I would love for them to like embarrass themselves. Wow. Wow. Come on. Like, like, I hope that relationship, because of what they did to me, I hope that relationship don't work out. Like, I really want my kid to beat their kid's butt in basketball. And when I put this out of my mouth, I want you to hear me. God's not intimidated by our truth. Most of the time, and I got to share this because most of the time our religiousness tells us that when we, when we articulate a thought that we empower it. I have a different take on it. And I'm not saying I never wish destruction on somebody. Come on, that's just bad, right? I don't, I don't go that far with it. But I don't, I don't think that releasing words just empower it. I think it exposes it. And I think when we expose, here, it's so much easier To lie to yourself if you're just holding it in. Like, because in your own mind, it doesn't sound like a big deal. But when you say it, exposure confronts denial. So as long as you're just internally keeping these crazy thoughts turning in your mind, then you never really give God access to confront the lies with his truth. But when I speak it, I reveal the contents of my heart. And it's at that point that, hear me, I immediately become accountable for the, what I've been thinking all along. Let's try it sometimes. Now, don't vent down. That's just bad, right? And so one day I was having one of those combos. I mean, I was popping off. <laughs> and what came out of me was how unappreciated I felt. I mean, my God, I just feel undervalued. Does anyone not see my effort? I'm out here killing myself, Sam. I'm doing the best I can. My wife was like, you sure are. (laughs) Like, see, like my wife ride or die, so she rode with me. She know I be sounding crazy. She's like, "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. (laughs) This ain't even right. It sure ain't. (laughs) Does anyone not notice what I do? I don't do, babe, like that. Is it too much to ask? I just want to pat on the back. I mean, I'm popping off, y'all. And I'm just letting it go. And I'm just letting it flow. And I'm just going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And my wife is so funny. She's notorious for this. My wife will allow me to get through all of my feelings. And then she, then she always does this. She says, oh, man, wow, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. She let, she let it simmer for a little bit. That's almost like these pads come in just in the background. I mean, we're just in the room, and I don't know if she say, I don't know if she say, Alexa, play, play pads. And she say, hey, babe, I mean, it's just, you can feel, this, you can feel the atmosphere shifting. I mean, I'm, I, I, and I'm just sick of it. He's over here, and then the light just shines on her. She has this little smile that is just so 
disarming. <laughs> hey, babe. How has your time been lately with God? <laughs> I'm in it, right? So I can't... <laughs> I can't be honest. <laughs> so I'm like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, me and God, we're good. I'm just, you know, I'm just a little upset right now, but I mean, we're good. I feel like we're spending, we're spending, <laughs> we spend time together every day. Early will I seek him. <laughs> and she always does the same thing, Deja. She's like, she never judges. She says, Okay, I'm just asking. I said, all right, I'm going to go downstairs. And all I hear is, okay, I'm just asking. Okay, I'm just asking. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> so I get to my office. I say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, where the shall I go? <laughs> And it's so amazing. This happens every time. That when I come to him, it's not that the circumstance change. <laughs> it's that my perspective changed. And here's why. I found a secret. You don't want to know. Let's go home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, quit begging. I found the secret. <laughs> it's in Psalm 23. That everything I need, hear me, is found in him. Psalm 23. You ready? Look at what the Bible says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wait a minute. This means that every need is supplied. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that I have rest and provision. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This means that I have restoration and guidance. You mean that all of this is available? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Wait. I have protection and comfort? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So I have vindication, provision, and anointing? Available. <laughs> Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that within my reach is His goodness and His mercy. Wait a minute. So this changes everything. This changes everything. This means that whenever I'm lacking anything, and this is this is strong. That's strong. It's nasty. Robotism. Drink it. That's what we call it. Robotism. No, it's not. It's robotism. This is robotism. Whenever I lack anything, I'm going to say it because I, I want you to know that I'm, I'm not misquoting what I want to say. I'm really about to say this. Whenever I lack in you read the same scripture I just read. Whenever I lack anything, it points back to the fact that I really lack presence. <laughs> and my wife is the one who always reminds me of this. So what I need. Even when I'm venting to my wife and just like, no, nobody. <laughs> Encouragement now is in my reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I feel discouraged, what I lack 
is in the presence of God. I know that's elementary, but it's all going to make sense in one second. Because in 1 Samuel chapter 30, something interesting happens. David and his men, they go off, right? To battle, and they return to their city, uh, uh, Ziklag. Right, they return to the city um, which had belonged to the Philistines. But now David is, is allies with the Philistines, so they go, come back to the city, and they walk in the city, and something crazy happened. As they head back, they realize that the Amalekites have actually came and messed their whole place up. Like they burnt their property down. And that's bad enough. But not only did they do that, but they took their wives and their children. This is a bad day. Mm-hmm. Like, like the Bible says that these men, you got to read it, 1 Samuel 30. It says that the men cried so hard that they didn't even have energy to cry anymore. They cry, these, these are 600 of the strongest men, ladies and gentlemen. They cry so hard that they melt down. Imagine, just imagine with me, man. Imagine coming home from out of town, and as you're riding up your neighborhood, your apartment complex, your dormitory, it's just lit up. All you see is smoke. Fire everywhere. Imagine what's racing through their minds. First, they think probably that their family is burnt, but then when they come, they don't see any, n- nothing that, that, that indicates that their family was there. So now, these are grown men, and now they're thinking, what happened to my kids? Like, are my kids, did they get raped? Like, what happened to my wife? Like, are they sold in slavery? Like, what happened? Are they being beaten right now? Are they being tortured? Are they even alive? They don't know what's going on, so these men melt all the way down. This is a bad day, and to make matters worse. They cry so hard, y'all. The sadness turns to outrage. <laughs> so the same men that were just following David to battle, they come back. And now they say, you know what? Somebody has to pay for this. We're going to stone David. This is a bad day. In the midst of this, the scripture pops up. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. You ready for this? Watch this. It says, and David was greatly distressed. I mean, come on, y'all. There's fear. There is failure. There is grief. All, I mean, his emotions are off the chain. And the Bible says David was greatly distressed for the people spake, stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. Watch this. But David encouraged himself. In the Lord his God. In the midst of his darkest hour, he remembered where his help comes from. Now, I don't, I don't know who needs to be reminded of this. I don't know who forgot it. But I just feel like the Lord wants you to know that you're not alone. You're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. Uh, uh, you're not abandoned. You're not helpless. Because even when times get tough, He's a God who will never leave you. Now, now watch this. I, I'm reading this, and I'm reading about David encourage himself, and I start praying about it. And, and this is what I found out, that the encouragement that he needed, he was unable to get from others at the moment. <laughs> but he found it in God's presence. And the Bible even goes further. It says that he does this. He, he turns to the priest. He says, hey, give me an ephod, and, and he inquires of the Lord. And this is where this Passage gets really good to me. You got to read it when you get a moment. He asked the Lord, and this is preachable by itself, because sometimes we just, because of our emotions, we act instinctively and we don't, we don't slow down to ask the Lord. And the Bible says he asked the Lord, should we pursue and will we win? Yes, What's the Lord's response? Yes, he says, not only will you overtake them, he says, but you will Recover all. Not some. All means all. And that's all. That all means, this, ladies and gentlemen, it's just too good to skip over. I need you to hear that. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? You will recover all. For those who've been in a tough season, you will recover all. Some of y'all took the enemy's best shot in 2020 and you thought 2021 would be different and you feel like, man, it feels like I'm in this cycle. Listen, you will recover all. You are, I'm telling you, man, you are in the middle. 
of season and restoration. And here's what I found, and I felt like the Lord wanted you to say this, wanted me to say this, that the Amalekites would have actually, I need you to hear this, they would have actually been better off leaving David and his men alone. Here's why I say this. Because not only did they recover all, but the enemy who bothered them had to pay for what he did. <laughs> so I need you to know, the enemy would have been better off leaving you and your family alone. Because after the attack, not only will you recover all, but he got to pay. <laughs> he going to pay because y'all about to be more united than y'all ever were before. The enemy would have been better off leaving your business alone. Because not only will you recover all, but he got to pay. Because God is about to send a harvest so big, you're not going to have room. And so what's going to happen? Listen to me prophetically. You better start employing some people. They're going to start getting saved. You're going to start shifting communities. The enemy would have been better off leaving you alone. Because not only will you recover, but he has to pay. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to tell you that you're about to bounce back stronger than ever, man. Man. You're about to come back with more creativity. You're about to come back with more power. You're about to come back with, with come on. The, the pain has actually unlocked the genius on the inside of you. Woo! Not only will you recover, but he has to pay. So here is, here is my hypothesis. I told you I do words, Sam. He said, I know. <laughs> The Raiders would have been better if David wouldn't have been bothered. Because had they not bothered him, maybe he would have never pursued them. Here's my hypothesis. That maybe God allowed the attack just to place a radar on the undetected enemy in your life. <laughs> they didn't hear what I just said, Tony. You didn't hear what I just said. You would have never pursued without the attack. Oh my God. Oh my God. You would have just kept ignoring it. Let me make it plain. That spirit would have just kept hovering over your bloodline and that on your family tree and just having its way if the attack wouldn't have hit your house. Because depression was normal. Alcoholism was normal. Perversion was just the way everybody did it. As a matter of fact, successful marriages in your family were unheard of. So God allowed the raider to show up. Just to put on the radar, watch this, that I'm about to pursue this. I need you to hear me and kill it once and for all. Do you hear what I'm telling you, Tamika? The curse stops with you. Come on. You are the curse breaker. Solomon had battles, but Goliath was the one of them. God allowed something to come on your radar so you can pursue it and end it once and for somebody shut out me. It stops now. So David and his men, I'm almost done. They go and they recover all. This is a crazy story. They recover all. They recover all. They recover all. How did David... <laughs> convinced men who are ready to murder him to go and recover all. Like at one point, that they put the stones down. At one point, that they put down the gun and say, we're not going to take you out. We're going to take the real enemy out. Like what was the shift? You ready for this? Here we go, Jen. The shift happened because David had to encourage them. Daniel, if David had not received encouragement, he wouldn't have had any to give away. So because 
he encouraged himself. Travis, when was the last time you met with God about that? Because he had an encounter with the great encourager. I don't know what your complaint is. I don't know what your it is. Maybe it's provision. I don't know what it is. But because he had an encounter with the only one who was qualified to shift it, he was no longer in a deficit. Watch this. And he was able to become what he needed. There was no encouragement coming from the men. Travis, you've been looking for it in the wrong place. How can they encourage you, David? And they are gripped by shock and pain. Sometimes, casters, we wait on something to come from people without even being sensitive to what they're going through. So, David, you're not going to get it from them. You can't get it from your allies, the Philistines, because they're going off the war. So maybe God boxed you in. In a corner. To say, I don't have anywhere else to go. I need an ephod. I need an encounter. I need a moment. Uh, uh, baby, thank you so much. This is a great relationship, but you can't give me what I need in this moment. <laughs> Children, thank y'all so much. Y'all give me so much joy, but you can't, I need a joy that you can't give me in this moment. <laughs> Boss, thank you for writing a check, but I need provision that you can't provide me with in this moment. I need a healing doctor that you can't give. I need something that can only come from encounter. Maybe just my hypothesis. God boxed you in. Find him again. Because of an encounter, David was able to become in the midst of chaos. Y'all, wait, 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 wait. There's smoke around him. He's not on an island and I just need a, I need a vacation just to re- No, no, he's in the middle of it. He's, he's, he's in the hospital room. He's, he's in the courtroom. He's, he's, in the, he's in the unemployment line. He is in the, he's in divorce court. He's in the middle of it. Gripped with shock. Gripped with fear. Instead of wondering, where are you in this, God? He says, I'm going to find you in this, God. I know they got their weapons drawn, but I got another weapon. I know they're planning to take me out, but I know a God who can show up in the middle of the smoke. My God. God in the middle of the storm. That's the best worship you can have, ladies and gentlemen, when you don't know where your help is going to come from. Come on. I don't just need people to worship when you're on the other side, but can you go to God when you're in the middle of it, when you feel confused, when you feel overlooked, when you feel forsaken? I know a God who can help me become what I need. And this is eight. 22, Genesis 8, 22. Long as the earth remains, will we see time and harvest. See time and harvest. This means, Travis, I want y'all to hear me. You possess seed to your greatest need. You may not possess the harvest. But you got to. I mean, you got to have a seed because the Bible don't lie. And the Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. So if you sow. You at least got a seed. David's encounter, hear me, supplied him with the seed of encouragement. That he needed. 
So when my wife asked me if I had spent time with God, I went and met with God. I told him my truth. Because they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the truth was, God, I feel discouraged. I feel like I'm on an island. I feel like I'm carrying this by myself. I feel, feel overlooked. I feel unappreciated. I don't know if people really are going to get it until maybe something happened to me. Then they'd be like, oh, man, he, he has something special. Like, and you may be thinking, man, Travis, you got it all. Like, why would you feel like that? You have no idea, man, the games that the enemy plays. And you can have within your reach something valuable and still feel like you don't have enough. So I went to God with my truth. I said, man, I, I just feel like I need encouragement. You never believe what God told me. B, what you need. He said, Travis, you say you need encouragement. Encouragement is a harvest. I need understanding. Understanding is a harvest. I need somebody to love me. Love is a harvest. I just need some peace around here. Peace is a harvest. He says, Travis, you keep saying you need encouragement. My question is, when's the last time you sold encouragement? <laughs> you know, a farmer would look absolutely insane if he stands in the middle of a field waiting on something to grow that he hadn't sown? My God. As long as the earth remains, seed time, harvest. What I sow will grow. This is why, this is why Jesus pre preaches his most famous sermon. No microphone. There's thousands of people. And he stands on this mount and he starts delivering. And Jesus is audacious. Jesus is bold. He didn't hold back. And maybe I just feel like he was talking through time to me <laughs> with the scripture in Matthew 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy he says mercy is reaped when mercy is sown <laughs> blessed are the encouragers for they shall receive encouragement <laughs> The harvest of encouragement comes from the seed of encouragement. Travis, you're asking for something that you don't sow. The greatest need is only really a seed. And he gives seed to the sower. I was praying through this and the Lord shared one more thing with me. Can I give it to you? How do I become what I need? I'm done. I become what I need by simply getting to the one who has it all. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There was one who's even more creative than Denar. He's the most creative human I know. But there is a God was more creative. And like Dinar, oftentimes you won't know what he's up to until he's done. <laughs> he's that creative. Earlier I talked about how we went to the mountains, Matt, and how, how there were trees upon trees upon trees and there was no fruit. <laughs> Just because the trees didn't have fruit didn't mean that the trees didn't have value. They're still supplying oxygen. 
they still had value. Over 2,000 years ago, there were trees in Jerusalem. Man, it was a Sunday before Easter. And I bet these trees had no idea what their purpose was in the earth. Because they, they weren't producing fruit. Just branches. These palm branches would be the thing that escorted Jesus into his divine purpose. And he rides on the road of redemption, hear me, on branches from a tree that begins as a seed. The point is this. Don't devalue the seed. Don't discount. I need you to hear me. That you have something to give. Be what you need. I need hope. Give hope. I, I, I need encouragement. Give encouragement. Listen, we're about to paint this city of Columbia and all around the world. We got engagers everywhere. We're going to paint our towns, our communities with love. We all need love. But you can't expect something you don't sow. And you don't know, man, I'm telling you, life happens so fast. You don't know when you're going to need hope. Give it. Be what you need. I will tell you what happened to me as a personal testimony. The more I started encouraging others, the less I was complaining about a lack of encouragement. Here's why, Crystal. Because whenever I sow, I can live on the expectation. <laughs> Is that good or what, man? David, David has an encounter with God that empowers him to become what he needs. And only by that is he able to be the answer for others. All you need is an encounter. There are people watching from all over the world, man, and you feel hopeless, you feel like you're at your end. All you need is a moment with God. And I want to invite you, before I rush past this moment, would you just take this moment and lift your hands to the God who sees you, the God who's for you, and allow Him to make alive in you what you feel like you lack. <laughs> He gives seed to the sower. I don't have to be like this. I don't have to be discouraged. 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 I have a seed of encouragement and I'm going to start sowing it. I have a seed of hope and I'm going to start sowing it. I got a seed of love and I'm going to start sowing it. I'm going to start giving it. I'm going to walk into my job and I'm going to be what I need. I'm going to walk through my neighborhood and I'm going to be what I need. I'm going to walk through my home and I'm going to be what I need. I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to be what I need. I won't be weary and well-doing for in due season I will reap if I faint not. I just got to be consistent. I just got to be faithful. I just got to keep sowing. Don't ignore it. The C. Be what you need. Be what you need. Be what you need. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that this is where it shifts. <laughs> there are people watching all over the world. Not just on Palm Sunday, but maybe the one who just went on YouTube and the year is 2023 and you released a word 
on this day to let them know, hear me, that you have what you need. <laughs> hey, it may just be a seed form, but you got something. Widow, what do you have in your house? I don't have anything except a small jar of oil. I have a seed. And as long as I have a seed, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed. Beg for bread. Seed don't beg. As long as I have a seed, I have a future. I don't know, man. There's people in this room and there's people all over the world and you feel like you're at the end. And I just hear the Lord saying, don't give up. Because the harvest is closer than you think it is. And soon you're going to look around and everywhere you look, bless harvest. I want to pray. I want to pray for the one who's been sowing and you feel like nothing's growing. The one who's been faithful. Like, man, I'm, I'm always coming through for other people. I'm always showing up, but nobody shows up for me. Like, I'm, I'm the one who everybody in the family calls when they're in trouble, and I pray everybody through, but when I need help, people act like I'm just tripping. I pay my cousin's cell phone bill, but nobody shows up for me. Can I tell you something? Harvest is closer than you think. And the attack becomes more intense when the enemy becomes more nervous. And I just feel like the Lord at the pause right here to tell somebody you're too close to give up. <laughs> just continue to be what you need. Because maybe what you need won't come from man, David. Maybe this time it'll come from God. Father, I thank you for those who've been so disappointed by people that they feel like they need to change their nature. Their nature of generosity, the nature of compassion. <laughs> and maybe the enemy's been telling them, you're just naive. You're doing all of this for nothing. God, I just feel like you want someone to know. They shouldn't be weary because you're watching. And the Bible calls you the Lord of the harvest. That means there's no wasted seed. You will recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. What about my child who's lost? You will. The enemy messed up when he messed with your family. You will recover all. What about all the money that went down with that business guy? You told me to start that. You will recover all. What about the years that I invested in that relationship and it didn't work out? You will recover. <laughs> oh. And I just want to prophetically release this word. I'm not just rambling. I just keep hearing the Lord saying stuff. And I feel like the Lord wants you to know. Not only is he watching. You're about to enter into one of the greatest seasons of your life. 
if you put on it. But scripture says, hear me, be not weary in well-doing, for you will reap if you faint not. The harvest of reaping comes from the seed of endurance. There's something special for those who endure. There's something special for those who hold on. There's something special for those who don't give up. Don't give up on God, or he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, he won't give up on you. Man, this is over. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on It's closer than you think. God, I thank you for all of those who are watching. I thank you that something happened in their hearts when they found out that you're the Lord of the harvest. That means you're the God that's in control. And I pray that this moment shifts everything in their life. Hey, if you're watching and you feel far from this God, I want to give you an opportunity to receive this hope, this love, this peace, this joy, this, this encouragement that we speak of. It only really comes from his presence. And I want to pray a prayer with you. I just want you to repeat after me. What an incredible opportunity to get things right with God. Repeat me. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. All that I am belongs to you completely. Thank you for dying for my sins. And thank you for getting up so I don't have to stay down. I receive you today as my Lord, as my Savior. I'll never be the same. No, never in Jesus' name. Come on, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or for the first time in a long time, information is on the screen. You're not alone. There's a family that's praying with you, that's standing with you. You're closer than you think you are. And the enemy knows that be not weary and well doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. It's closer than it's ever been. Just hold on. You'll make it through. We love you. Your path to joy. Your future is waiting. Move forward. We'll see you next week. Pray that this week's message was truly transformative for your life. We thank you so much for joining us. And we want you to stay connected. Even if you would like to give, all that information is down below. Absolutely. There's no gift too small mm -hmm. or too big. I'm going to tell you the greatest gift is if you receive mm -hmm. his gift of salvation for you. Maybe you're lost or maybe you're down and you just needed hope. This is the right place to provide that for you. Mm -hmm. And I know you might spell hope H-O-P-E, <laughs> but I spell hope J-E-S-U-S. -E yes! He is our friend, he is our father, mm -hmm. he is for you, he's mm -hmm. not against you. I would love to pray with you before you leave today. Mm -hmm. Would you please bow your head with me, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for our family. Thank you. Thank you for this moment in time that we've had together that was on your schedule. Mm -hmm. This was an appointment, a divine appointment that the father had with his children and I pray that you would just bring calm to their heart, yes, that Lord. you will bring peace where there is confusion, that mm -hmm. you will bring joy where there is depression. You are our God, you are our friend, you are our father. All of this is for you, you mm -hmm. get the credit. For anyone who's lost, remind them yes, Lord. that you love them and you're for them. In Jesus' name, amen. We amen. love you, we'll see you next week.